ladies and gentlemen. My name is Thierry Lott and I'm Vice President Sales and Marketing for Massive Ferguson Europe, Africa, Africa and Middle East. So I'm sure you are all wondering why Vision of the Future. Vision of the Future is an event organized by Massive Ferguson for farmers from across Europe, Africa and Middle East with the aim of acting as a catalyst for new ideas and to stimulate growth in agriculture. Just a few years ago, the thought of one of the world's leading farm machinery brands running such an event would have seemed strange. Today, it is the inevitable result of the globalization of our industry and the need for each sector to work closely together to manage global trends and pressures so that they become an opportunity, not a threat. Today, our industry, our industry is totally interdependent, whether you are a farmer, an agricultural supplier of any type, a processor, a consultant, a food retailer, or even a journalist as you are. We are part of the same agricultural team and we may ignore global trends, opportunities and threat at our peril. The world is changing, changing more rapidly than ever before. For farmers and farming, this changing are having and will continue to have profound effects. We all need to explore new ways every day, new ideas of doing things. And I'm going to shock you now. In fact, we are operating in a superb environment full of promise. Massive Ferguson has always been a catalyst for new ideas and new energies. And with this important farming event, we aim to share our vision of the future, a future which will create better and more profitable farming businesses. Today, we selected special partners who share a common vision with us and who can help farmers grow and develop their businesses in this very fast moving environment. And you will be able or you have been able to see more of their contribution today. As journalists, you will already be aware of the global trends and long-term long and short-term affecting our industry. You may recall that it was Martin Rischenhagen himself who was the first in our industry to raise these trends at a massive Ferguson CIMA press conference shortly after joining ACCO. And it is ACCO's global brand, Massive Ferguson, with approaching 200,000 tractors produced annually around the world that has subsequently received substantial investments in research and development, engineering and manufacturing to enable it to offer straightforward and efficient solutions to the challenges and opportunities that a farmer may face anywhere in the world. And this has included significant manufacturing and assembly investments in China and our partner in Tafe in India. In South America too, where Massive Ferguson is number one. New Massive Ferguson assembly operation also in North America. Substantial new MF combine harvester developments in Braganza, Italy, and in Eston also, North America. And of course, as Richard said, impressive developments in every aspect of research and development, engineering, and the manufacturing at Beauvais, France. Today, this morning, you've experienced the new MF 7626 and 7618. They are part of a new range of Massive Ferguson machines, perfectly attuned to future farmer needs. And the new MF Beta Combine, just the latest in a series of new developments from our harvesting colleagues. Many people, including many of our competitors, 
now acknowledge the fact that Massey Ferguson has the finest range of products that it ever had. But actually, it's not quite true. Because later this year, and into 2013, the Massey Ferguson range is about to get even better. We will be launching a brand new range of tractors at AIMA this year. And that is part of Massey Ferguson's vision of the future. So, now let's examine what that future holds. We all know the numbers. Today we have roughly 7 billion people. By 2020, we'll be 7.7, 8.6 by 2035, and 9.15 by 2050. That is a staggering increase of nearly a third in less than 40 years. The inevitable first conclusion to this is that our farmers need to produce more, far more. Yes, there are still some uncultivated areas in the world. Africa, for example, owns 11% of the arable land, of which 86% is still uncultivated. Bulgaria, too, have 2 million hectares uncultivated. But the important point is that the remaining increase in production has to come from the currently cultivated land. And if you combine dietary, dietary changes that are happening now in the world with the growth of the population, then it means that over the same time scale, food production must at least double. Dairy output, for example, must increase by 30 million tons over the next 10 years. Of course, things will not be easy, and we know that this high demand will not always lead to stable pricing or higher commodity prices. We know that the more our customers will go and will rely on the global market, the more they will have to face volatility. And this is why we have Agritel here with us today to help farmers to protect their interests. Consumption also. It will not take place where we are used to seeing it today. This is meaning that the rich countries that we are will have an even more important role to play in the future to feed the world. The European population, which was 12% of the world population in 2000, is set to become just 7.5% in 2050. Meanwhile, the African and ASEAN population, which were 74%, are set to become 79%. So the need for more food there will be of utmost importance. Yes, overall, and on average, we see a very bright future for the need of food and the price of commodities. But the very dark side of this is that the cost of inputs will be rising too. And this is something that we already see today. Look at the price of diesel, which rose by 20% last year only. And look at the three last weeks. It was the same also for nitrogen and other fertilizers, and the rise in animal feed this year has been even greater. And no business has a future if it is not profitable. So the critical point is that we need better management of inputs and genetic improvements that will lead to a better use of finite resources and reduce production cost of a unit of protein. And this is one of the reasons why we have asked TIMAC Agro Roulier Group and Maïsa Semence to be here with us during this event. They are showing our guests a small part of their know-how and are sharing with them their latest developments. We must improve the way 
we apply inputs as we produce proteins. This is the way forward. Take wheat as an example. A panel of varieties shows that you can produce 100 kilos of wheat with a range of nitrogen from 2.7 kilos to 3.1 kilos. So the gap is 15%. And these 15% are representing 34 euros per hectare. And this is 10% of the average payment per hectare of the EU 15, 10%. And this is a very small example of the potential productivity increase that genetics will bring us. I can already imagine potatoes that will have a 50% better resistance to rot. This is meaning a saving for the farmers of 200 euros per hectare on a standard fungicide program that costs twice that. Imagine also new breeds of potatoes and maize needing less water. That was a big sub subject of our farmers visiting us at this event, discussing with our partners. On sugar beet too, we all know that with genetically modified plants, we could technically increase production by 50%. That might not be possible today. And it is a very, very sensitive issue. But what about tomorrow? The challenge of increased production is huge, but also in certain countries, including those in Central and Eastern Europe and also Africa, for storing that production after harvest is as important. It is estimated, for example, that in Kazakhstan, 30% of the wheat production is lost because of poor storage conditions. Five to 15% in Ukraine and Russia. So very clearly, big investments are needed there to improve the farmer's incomes. Also, a big advantage of storage is that it avoids the farmer to sell its harvest just at the moment of the harvest at whatever price. And now I think that you all understand why we at Co wanted to get involved in that business through the acquisition of GSI. I would not like to forget the challenges that are facing our European livestock farmers, which are particularly great. European demand for meat and dairy products may be static, but across Asia and Africa, they are growing dramatically. European meat consumption is only predicted to increase 3% ahead over the next 25 years. Contrast this to the 37% growth, 37% growth expected in China and South Africa. European livestock farmers have the advantage of very good land and the tradition of breeding and management. But they are more and more exposed to internal, international competition. Many of them rely on imported feed that is getting more and more expensive. And as, a, as an example of how critical this is, soya meal prices have risen by 170%, 170% over the 10 last years, with a 60%, 6-0, increase since the beginning of this year. With 90% of the world's soya now genetically modified, Europe's reluctance to grow or import genetically modified grains also has a very big impact on the cost and availability of feed. But the farming industry still has a very long way to go before the European public fully accepts the benefits of genetically modified technology. And as farmers, they need to be very sensitive to this. The increase in feed costs and the need also to reduce greenhouse gas emissions 
may mean that production shifts to animals that convert feed the most efficiently, such as fish, pigs, and poultry. Meanwhile, cattle and sheep farmers will seek to produce more meat and milk from the grass they produce and they can grow at home. Of course, the mapping of the genes of farm animals, if used sensibly and sensitively, has the potential to transform animal production, allowing the development of cattle, sheep, pigs, and poultry that can produce meat and milk more efficiently and have a smaller impact on the environment. A greater understanding of genetics and improved management has already led to dramatic increases in production. And I'm going to give you two examples to that. Two days hence produced nearly 50%, 50% more eggs than they produced 50 years ago. While milk yield is up a third on where it was just 20 years ago. But those high yielding animals need greater care to meet their potential. And machine technology there has a unique role in helping to grow the right crops for animal feed, while balers, handlers, rakes, and tethers help to ensure stock is housed and cared for in the best conditions. And this is one also of the main reasons why ACCO acquired Fela, who are experts in rake and tethers and mowers. All these points are extremely important with regard to the new CAP that will become greener. And we are sure that if all parties are reasonable, there is a huge potential for growth in the years to come, spending less on pesticides and fertilizers, using less water in a better way. This also may mean for all of us that there will be a return to old methods, methods such as in between rows tillage in order to reduce herbicides applications and take advantage of the air moisture for plants. But having said all this, where is Massey Ferguson involved? And then here the answer is very simple. Massey Ferguson is involved at all stages of agricultural production and has been for a very long period of time. Our vision is to be the number one choice of farm equipment for the experienced farmer around the world. And it is a vision we have held for many years. It is a vision that is reality. And all of us can measure it wherever we stand on the globe. Massey Ferguson is everywhere and on every farm type. Our aim at Massey Ferguson is not to introduce technology for technology's sake, but to ease operations, improve comfort, reduce operational costs, and offer greater productivity to our customers. Our promise is to deliver straightforward dependability in the toughest conditions and a solid performance that farmers can always rely on for the years to come. We are committed to harvesting and our recent investments in people are significant, including, as you know, the creation of a fully dedicated harvesting team and the acquisition of the Breganza factory in Italy has set a new era for Massey Ferguson and a superb opportunity to accelerate our growth. We care because we know that harvesting is the result of 11 months hard work and attention that transforms a small seed into profitable income. We want to be working with our customers to transform their effort into pure gold with a little help from Massey Ferguson. Finally, 
Our mission and vision are very clear and can be summarized in very few words. A farmer's operational partner. We want to be the catalyst for new ideas in order to help every farmer on the globe meet his technical and financial goals. Superior manufacturing quality. Superior engineering, I mean design, comfort, ease of use. Superior and unique support. Finance, full service, resell value, maximized up times. And last but not least, superior distribution network. We do have a good network, but we want it to be even better and more passionate to face the changes ahead of us. Our goal, our firm goal, is a dedicated dealer network exclusive to Massey Ferguson, working even closer alongside our customers and business partners. We do believe in the future of farming and invest significantly in new techniques and technologies. We consider that our growth challenge is as important to us as it is to our customers. And like them, our determination for success is very real. Superior DNA from Massey Ferguson is unique and we want to capitalize with faith on these superior genes and transform them in a fine alchemy that will bring our customers total satisfaction with our products and services. And our vision doesn't stop here. Many thanks to you all.